All right, it's the season finale. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks to the 1,200 or so people that have come through the door. And thanks also to the six acts that are on tonight's fucking powerhouse. And we're thankful to have them all in the building at once. Also, thanks to the crew. Zach Bradkey, Sophie Woods, Louis Cornell have all done an incredible job. That Zach thrusting his hand in at this inopportune moment. But really, everyone in the crew is like a pretty established filmmaker in their own right. And we're very lucky to have them, despite the fact that we only feed them with Thin Crust Pizza Hut. Also, I will say, please keep watching Banalarama. We've got a whole range of other non-related music series that you can watch. There's an illustrated short story series coming up very shortly. Subscribe on YouTube or whatever. ABC, if you're watching, we're not some internet pirates. We're not violent people. If you like the show, get in touch. Same for Pizza Hut, actually. If Pizza Hut liked the show, you can have it. If you want it, it's yours. Enjoy the show, whoever you are. This is ABABCD. Thank you. Habits crew, I know that you're sometimes, not all the time, a bit crippled by anxiety before shows and like to have some drinks. I don't want you to feel anxious about this show because I feel that visually, uh, you guys, like, this is a perfect vehicle for you. You've really done your research there. Well, um, I, I can't help, I'm always a little bit anxious, but I'm two beers deep, so, like, it'll be fine. I do agree, I think this is a good platform for us. Uh, visual, I was just saying to Mo before, like, Wow, our outfits are so good. I'm so glad they're going to be documented. You have actually been on the show before, and I must concede, at the time I didn't realise that you were on the show. Harpoons are good mates, um, and they yeah, they just wanted a party choir for the, some of their gigs, and then it just kind of got condensed down. Yeah, we've been doing um, it for a while as well. Yeah. And I felt a bit honoured being in there, like, totally. filmed, A, B, A, B, C, D. But uh, the lossless by way of contrast, I don't think are anxious at all. I think Grant's probably just uh, jet-lagged and Oscar, I don't think, is capable of anxiety. That's so fucking wrong, man. You have no idea how wrong you are about this guy. Really? Yeah, this it's is so like wrong. one of the most sensitive human beings alive. If someone, like, in, in another state feels anxious, Oscar feels it. <laughs> how did you meet everyone here, Oscar? Mohini and I, have our moms are friends. And they do like spiritual stuff together. And Grant and I were uh, nemesis in high school. Teenage rivals. Really? I I I kid you not. We hated each other, but we also really respected each other, which made it harder. We have a, a, a recurring anecdote where we'd both fell asleep at the same house party one night. And, um... I remember waking up to him playing the guitar and thinking, I hate that guy, but damn, this is beautiful. And apparently he'd been watching me sleeping thinking, I hate that guy, but he's so hot. I wrote in a letter to a crush how hot he was. He's got the face of an angel. I hate him entirely, but God, it's so beautiful to look at. So you see, like the, uh, the tension was right for, from, from day one. I feel like we're on countdown. Where's Molly? <laughs> Remember when we went to Molly Meldrum's house? Yeah, that was so weird. That's a new idea story that I'm building up to sell.
to. Hello. Uh, Hello. The stage banter, frankly, as I've said to you, Etta, was some of the best I've heard. But you did mention, you said that you'd been to Molly's house, and I don't understand quite how this transpired. I don't know legally how much we can say, but um, we used to be in this band signed by this guy. We were at our friend's house one night, and we were sent a limo. Went somewhere in Richmond or North Richmond. Richmond. With an (laughs) Egyptian-themed... Fence. It's reasonably iconic. I mean, there aren't too many places like that. (laughs) Went inside Molly's house. It was super awkward. I I must concede, I also don't like asking about... I don't know, celebrity accounts. But I also don't like asking about um, names of things and how names are derived. But in looking up you guys and, and, and looking into things to speak to you about for this, I did come across the origins of Saturn Returns, which, to me, as a 29.5-year-old... Oh, you're close, man, you're close. ...really struck a chord. I feel passionate about um, astrology and Saturn Return, heavy time, extreme change, wrote some songs about it, you know? So is 29.5 when it happens? Between 27 and 30. Arguably 31 sometimes. I went and got my chart done. I've gone through the Saturn return. I've, my Saturn goes retrograde. I'm out. I go back in. What does retrograde mean? Backwards. Annoying. Yeah. See, I'm annoyed by this stuff, but... It was actually Nelly's idea. I think it's annoying, but um, I thought it would be a good story. Go um, off. As far as I'm concerned, there were some loopy things happening last year, mm. and perhaps like. If you'd like to get involved in this Mercury... I don't know, you're going to the Mercury Retrograde. I'm with you, I'm with you. There's some loopy things were happening, and I was like... I looked up the time of the year, and I was like, is there something going Mm. And there was, and then I basically forgot about it. And again this time, this year... You're like, what's going on? happening again, and I was like... I googled again, I was like, that's the thing that was last Mm. year. And usually I'm in your camp. In this instance, I'm in Edda's camp. Mm. I think it's a thing. You've connected to us. You've connected to us.
far as you guys are concerned, I was walking around here when you played just before, and there were a lot of people saying Beach Boys related things. And I don't know if that's because of Pet Sounds turning 50, I think it was two weeks ago now, um, or if it is due to the sound of your band. Yeah, I think so. I think everybody loves the Beach Boys. Um, Pet Sounds is an awesome album, the production, and I think I haven't seen any of the documentaries or anything, or the way, or the movie, but. I think the way he produced it is pretty crazy. I think we're more John Cusack fans, and um, we all watched the film with John Cusack in it, and that really led us to get into the Beach Boys. As far as the lyrics are concerned, I think a lot of people overlook with Crepes the fact that there are these very pretty, surfy um, melodies and beautiful tunes, but the lyrics are in fact quite biting in parts. Um, I, I would hope that sometimes people don't pay too much attention to the lyrics. Um, but yeah, thanks. Um, yeah, I just try and keep it catchy. and um, I don't think I'm a very good lyricist, to be honest, but um, yeah, thanks for saying so. I'll also add, I think a misconception about you guys is this uh, jangly thing. But live, the first time I saw you was at Melbourne Music Week, and it struck me that the rhythm section was actually a lot heavier than I'd expected. There's like this propulsive rhythm section that on record isn't there. I think it's a twin thing. I think it's like a twin sort of like thing going on. You know, <laughs> they don't play on the recordings yet. Well, no, I think it's um, the recording on the EP, Tim did the drums mainly. And so on a live take, it's... Been, they don't it's exist on record, but they will. Oh my God. <laughs> I have absolutely no idea what you're saying. Yeah. Neither do we. Hello. Half the time. I hope the camera's caught it because I had no fucking idea what he said. But I think it's been a good interview. Yeah.
but feel that you're, there's a like an inherent calmness to your band that's been there from the outset. There's like not this affectation of not caring, but there's also not this like you know, I guess off-putting like striving to succeed. There's just this general. No, no we have no motivation. Th- this no, is but there's amazing. just this general calmness that I just don't. I, I can't fathom. Maybe it's like you kind of have to be calm to to go into the zone or something to do it. It's like it's actually quite you know like you get performance anxiety playing live like it's quite a confronting scary thing to do and um, there are so many elements that are anxiety inducing and then the music's quite cathartic so you're letting all of that out but it's like you almost just have to be calm or like what else would you do in terms of the Michael Rother contribution to She Beats I was just like thinking about the manner in which your music is put together which is incredibly detailed and requires a lot of layering and fiddling around with levels and mastering and then this guy just wafts in who admittedly you're like of course we've got to get him on the album but it's like he listens to the songs once and then just wants to lay down some guitar lines and if I were you I'd be like the songs are done who's he can't just it was a strange experience because we'd done, we were at the mixing stage of um, the album at She Beats at the time and it was a real impromptu, it was quite an impromptu thing where he just sort of, it was his idea just to come in and, you know, play on one or two songs and he didn't even listen to anything prior, he just came in and said, I can do, you know, I'll just see what happens and whatever. But then we were just like, shit, is this going to actually fit within that song because it had already been done and it was kind of it was it was really challenging for our engineer and for us just to work it into this already dense song i also have this theory that people when they encounter you guys because you all do a lot of different things in the creative industries would almost feel like they need to to give like a certain representations of themselves and I have read one article where you're like talking about oh there's just a reference to like um, dilettantes and that sort of thing and I guess if I were to meet you guys I would be worried about if I was like a musician I'd be worried about coming off as that. I think you just have to follow your instinct and kind of you can tell when a band is sort of genuine and, and passionate it's just something that you know, you can say whatever you like in words, but you could just kind of tell when you see a band that is genuine and creative, you can just tell. On that front, and this is, I must concede, a very passe question, but it is of interest to me and I'm sure a lot of people here, you do tend to make an album like every five years and it has been about three. Is there something going on that we need to be aware of? Yes. Like an album? Yes. Yeah. Beaches are making a new album. Doing a new it's album. Almost, almost done. It will be a yeah, double, it's double album. Are we, are we allowed to say that? Oh, no, it's not. I didn't. A double didn't album? Didn't. Really? Yeah, well, basically, well, maybe. at the moment, no. we have about 21 songs, 21 songs or something. Good grief. We just cleared the whole year and just... Um, worked on yeah songwriting and recording and overdubs and we spent quite a bit of time in the studio so we've got a lot of material that we're really excited about releasing really soon
I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but I feel like a lot of people were talking about how the Golden Plains set you played recently was kind of like they're ready. You know what I mean? And I don't quite know how to quantify that. You've been a band for like 13 years, but it, there was some sense from other people of like, no, they're ready now. Do you understand what they're referring to by that? Um, the three of us uh, seem to be working pretty well together and it's kind of gelling on stage. So that makes us kind of uh, pretty comfortable on stage and we can kind of work together um, quite well. So um, I guess maybe people are just picking up on the fact that we're enjoying ourselves. And, you know, that hasn't always been the case. You know, it's been a kind of fairly rocky transition from, from um, the old lineup to this lineup, working with Wes, uh, bringing in the live drums. Who seems kind of like manager drummer. Yeah, in fact, I haven't, I haven't told you this, James, but I'm thinking yeah. I'll make a play for that position very soon. Manager, yeah. you can freaking have it, Wes. Yeah, you know, yeah. it doesn't pay well, but uh, it's all yours if you want it. Yeah, right. I, think that's, I think that's something we need to discuss. Right, yeah. But I'm interested to know in terms of, you know, like Montreal Olympics inspired yeah. album yeah. or like, yeah. you know, the East Germany yeah, before the war came down. Yeah. It's like, how much research and what sort of research goes into that specifically? We just find a kind of idea that we like uh, and then that leads us down a research path and that, that leads us into kind of um, more kind of uh, uh, expanded kind of ideas. But to begin with, uh, there's no research other than, hey, this is a nice idea because we like the, the vibe. I feel like um, you are hitting your stride in precisely the manner that you'd hoped in terms of the immersiveness the unrelenting nature of the sets, which totally. we've just observed, yeah. do you feel like that's where you want to be? We want to get more and more, um, uh, we want to create a continuous one single experience that people can have when they come to see us. Not so much, I mean, at the moment where all we, what we present is a collection of songs, uh, but I think for the future we're going to concentrate on just some um, creating singular, very immersive, as you say, experience. There's just one continuous thing, you know. What's the next story, though? What's the next bloody, well, you know? No, we don't know. Really? Uh, no, we don't. I was hoping you would know. No. Uh, uh, what are the ideas? Or oh, maybe we can, I can give some feedback. Well, what, what, what's in the pool? We're always um, tossing around ideas, but uh, you know, we're just going to bunker down now and bunker on. down sounds a lot to me like Germany in 1940 something. Uh, Could be an idea. Well, well too, I don't know. You know. Um, I don't think so. We, we've been, Could be we've bunkers done. in France. Could be bunkers in. We are. We are looking at America. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. Um, aren't we, Wes? We are. We're, we're in what off, capacity? We're, we're eyeing off America. I'm not going to say too much more, but um, there are ideas around uh, America and what's happening to America. It's on the precipice of an apocalypse, frankly. Well, that's right. That's right. Um, a cultural and I think, like in yeah. in a lot of there's, senses, there's a massive massive cultural shift happening. Uh, look, I'm not going to say much more. I'm going to stop. That's me. enough. Yeah. Uh, you've said enough, and I'm, you've, you've, had, you've got me titillated.
Just being forced to shoehorn some crass cross promotion in for a few profoundly unpopular internet shows. Orwell's Australia, a rediscovered 1984 docu series predicting the dystopia of present day Australia. What does that even mean? Vacant vacations, the world's most exotic destinations explored by its least capable correspondents. Sounds really slapstick. Red or white, a late night talk show with lots of drinks, maybe a between two ferns rip off or something, I don't know. Bedroom suck, home videos, a dad cam Melbourne music series. But yeah, chess thing's a bit passe now, I would have thought. And a lot of docos and sketches. Subscribe to this. Uh, enjoy Habits, they're up next after the tennis. <laughs>